Hey everybody, it's Carrie and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be going over basically everything that I crocheted again this week. I actually got a lot done, but I do want to say I'm like going off my week being Thursday to Thursday opposed to like Sunday to Sunday. I don't know. It just makes sense to me. I, I don't know why my brain wants to do Thursday to Thursday, but that's what we're doing. I was able to get a lot crocheted over this past week because of the fact that the weather last week was just so bad <laughs> if you guys didn't know i have my own horse farm i have mentioned this before and so on a day like today where it's really nice and it's sunny and there's good temperature and just like a nice enjoyable day then i will typically ride and do a little bit more things with my horses but Last week, oh my god, it was kept raining and everything was too wet to ride. So when days like that come around, it definitely gives me a lot more time to crochet than like if it's nice. So I was able to get a lot done. I feel like I did. Not everything here is the entirety of everything I crocheted. I do have about like six other things that are currently set to the side on my table, but just because of the fact that I was not able to finish sewing them, I didn't want to include them in this week, but they will be in next week. So I have quite a few bins around me and I'm just gonna start <laughs> grabbing whatever. I like to keep like my new items, especially now that I am in market season and I have basically everything my current inventory typed up except this new stuff that I've made. So I have separate bins that are like for new items that I've made. So what I've made this past week and everything. And then I'll catalog that. Then they'll get sorted into the other bins. I'm doing pretty good. I'm at about, I think like almost 250 items. So I have my first market in March 9th, I think. I think I've said this before, but I... I don't know. So this past week and even like today, you guys won't see some of the things I've been making today, has really been a lot of also trying new patterns opposed to the same patterns that I typically do, which was a little bit exciting. It's always interesting to try new patterns, to read new patterns, and then to see what I enjoy crocheting. A lot of what I crochet are things that I actually like to crochet just because I have always been this way. If I don't enjoy something, I give it up in a minute. <laughs> Even if I need to do it, I just like abandon it. It's been interesting trying new patterns, just kind of seeing what I enjoy, what I don't enjoy. Definitely been playing around with it. So I've got some new things that you guys probably have never seen before that I've done. But we'll start off with some normal things. I have these two turtles. Just like I said in my previous video, just going through my turtle thing and just making all different types of colors. I just kind of grab whatever color I feel like. I actually have a bin that's behind my camera that if I only have say like 30 minutes or something in between riding and doing my barn, I'll sit down and just crochet fins. So I have a bin that actually has all of the pieces that I've made and stuff there. So typically what ends up happening I just grab random colors. I don't know if I've done this color combination before or not, but I always make two. So that way if one sells, I have another one, but it is this uh, turquoise. And then I want to say Sweet Snuggles calls this, it's not ice cream, but it's their like baby green possibly, but it's a really pretty combo. I made from my own pattern, this little Daisy mini cow. I did change the ears. So if you guys ever get the pattern and if you want to do the ears differently, I was just playing around with it. I basically for the ears just didn't make an inside piece. I just did, you know, six single crochets in magic ring, increase around and then one SC or one single crochet, increase and then fasten it off and then sewed it. It did take more time so I'm like, I really prefer not to do much sewing when it comes to market prep items, but I say that and I had a lot of items this week that had a lot of sewing, but I went ahead and made a little mini cow. I think for my upcoming market, my main focus is just going to be keep making more mini cows because I think they're much easier to convince people to purchase just in terms of what I price them at. I'm gonna be making some more, but I wanted to go ahead and make a little daisy one because I don't have any. So I have this little daisy cow, and if you guys are interested, I always have in my description my pattern. And I'm so thankful for everyone who has gone out of their way to purchase the pattern or favorite my shop. It means so much, and I have more plans to make patterns, but I'm also trying to balance it with market prepping. <laughs> It's just finding a very clear balance is difficult when you work 
two other jobs. The next one I have is a new pattern that I've never done before, but I saw it and I really wanted to try it just because I thought it was pretty cute. So I have this Sleepy Lion, which is from Zero Gravity. They are the same person who actually made the cows, the large cow pattern that I used to follow, but she has the Sleepy Lion and then I think a bunny one and they're releasing dinosaurs or something up next. But I wanted to make the lion because I don't really have too many lions and I did not want to do bunnies because I have plenty of bunnies that I've already made. <laughs> it was super like easy. I had to embroider my nose because I didn't have, you know, like safety noses or anything that I thought was the appropriate size. But it was pretty straightforward. I mean, it did include a decent amount of sewing. I would think compared to probably what most people would want to do for a market piece. But I also just kind of made this piece for myself because I wanted to make something that I wanted to make opposed to something that I needed to make. <laughs> I had a few of these this week. <laughs> so I have this little sleepy lion. The next one I have is the first of the rabbits. I have this one. It is done in, I, it's almost this coral color, like peach color. I want to say I... I'm not 100% certain, so don't quote me on this, but it's like baby bunny, Barbie bunny, I can't remember. As always, I'll have all of the patterns in my description. There is a link to the Google Docs and everything, and I'll update it with the new patterns that I use in this video. So I have one of these, and this one I just ended up doing one bow, the other one has two, but I have one of them. I used to make them when I first started out, and I was really surprised because from what I remember, when I first started out, everything seemed so much bigger and I really didn't like them because I was crocheting so loosely, I guess. I was just getting into it. I think I made them like within two weeks of me starting and they weren't bad, but they weren't like anything that I was proud of. But I definitely do think that my bunnies turned out a lot better this time. I am 100% better at stuffing. I used to understuff a lot of things. So now I definitely stuff a lot fuller and have gotten a lot better with sewing. So I was a lot more proud of this considering that I had not made another one since, oh gosh, it's had to be like three or four months. So this is the first one of this. And I'll go ahead and show you guys the second one, which was this lavender one. And then I did the two bows. I am currently working on one more of these, which is gonna be a pink one. And then we'll have the hot pink bows. And that's pretty much what I kind of do for the bunnies. I might make another one in a different color, maybe like in a yellow for spring. I wanted to have three and cover those three basics because I think before when I was making bunnies, I had pink, light purple, and then the peach color or coral. So I wanted to do the same thing. But this is the purple one. The sewing on these bunnies isn't anything crazy. You just have to sew the arms and then the ears. I sew the bows to the head, actually. It takes a little bit more time, but just to give it a little bit more structure. And it's easier for me to also hide the yarn tails as opposed to cutting them and burning them or having to use anything else like hot glue. Definitely gives it a cleaner look as well. So I have this bunny here. These two aren't new for me, but I get asked about them quite frequently. So I have two little foxes right here. The only other thing that I will add to them before my market would be, I usually do a bow tie on them just to give them something on their neck because I think it looks a little bit better. I get asked about these foxes a lot and they're pretty much the main reason why I get parfait, chunky, and orange because they're really the only thing I use that orange for a lot. So I usually try and make one for a market it and I had the time and I had it out and I was like you know what I'm gonna go ahead and make two and cover my bases so I at least have these two and then I'm at a better starting point than I was originally <laughs> moving on to the next one I have also made this pattern before and I'll show you guys the first one that I made this is the first one that I had made I think back in December possibly I was finishing up with my custom work and I think I wanted to make something for myself and I always say make something for myself but nothing is ever for myself I always sell pretty much everything I make I made something for myself like I didn't want to make the same patterns or I wanted to try something new I made this guy and I did him in the terracotta and I wanted to make another one of them in the Java from Chanel Home Slim granted I think I do prefer the terracotta opposed to the Java one that I made but I also 
have come to realize with the more markets that I do that everyone has different preferences. I think that sometimes it's good to also have different color combos because there's been many of the times where I have maybe not preferred a color combination, but then somebody else sees it and absolutely loves it. So sometimes when I make things, I'll just change up colors, maybe lighter, maybe darker. I think variety is really important. And if you can make multiple of one item, it only will help you out because there are more options for somebody to choose from if they don't necessarily love the first one. So I have this one. I did not make it this week, but this is the first one that I did do. So you guys can see the difference. And then this is the one I made this week with the Java. So it just turned out a little bit darker and I probably will end up making like one or two more spots if I end up having time or remember to do it. As of right now, this is what this little guy looks like, but this one is made with Java. So it's just much darker. Honestly wish that Chanel Home Slim or Sweet Snuggles Light would come out with a nicer brown. That is kind of like Premier Parfait Chunky with the teddy bear because terracotta is really red undertones and Java is almost borderline and black unless you like are looking at it. So I wish and hope that one day we'll get an in-between color. Moving on from that one, I have a new pattern as well. So I made this little raccoon and I will say this raccoon, giraffe and fox are all made by the same creator, which is Ren Miao, I believe is how I say the name, but they're all her style and I do like them because they work up fairly quick. They are definitely not low sew by any means. I think most of the patterns I've done have a fair amount of sewing. So if you can deal with the sewing, they end up being really cute and a pretty good size. I don't quite mind the sewing. It's got this little puffy tail and everything. And I wanted to make a raccoon just because I do live in the South and people absolutely love the possum. So I was like, oh, it might be cute to have a little raccoon in the mix. So I finally have a raccoon. And now we're gonna get to my last three that I have. And these last three are all new patterns as well that I have done. So we'll start with the first two small items. I am working on just building up some new small items as well. And with it being a little bit more spring summertime, I wanted to try to make some smaller bunnies too. So I have this one as the first one that I did, which is a thick floppy ear bunny. This is low sew, I guess you would say, because the body really does not require much sewing. It's just really sewing the ears on it if you do a hat or whatever. And then the second one that I made is this one, which I actually kind of prefer the two-toned ears opposed to the floppy ears but this one also has a strawberry hat. Pretty much whenever I make anything like this that has a hat and they consider it no sew because a lot of those patterns will have a hat, but they're like, okay, you don't have to sew it on, just like put it on their head. I personally, if I'm doing a market, always sew them. So this strawberry hat is sewed on just because I don't want somebody to like lose it and tends to hold up a lot better being stored if it's sewed. So I have this one that's a strawberry one and some of the things that I have on my desk that I'm gonna be completing this upcoming week or more of these little bunnies. They worked up in a pretty quick time. I think if you're looking for small patterns, the person who did this one always has a lot of small patterns and I make a few of them. I'm making a dog one from her right now that I made last year, but it's, uh, AQ something crochet, but like I said, pattern links for these will always be in the description, but I have this one. And then the last new one that I made that I'm gonna include in this video is this one. This is a butterfly, and I did use some sparkly eyes on this one. And this one was fairly easy, but same thing, I would definitely not say this is low so. <laughs> I was sitting in my orthodontist appointment and I was looking through Etsy and I typed no so patterns in just to see like, was there anything that really stood out to me that I was kind of missing? And this popped up and I was like, oh, I've been wanting to make a butterfly. I didn't necessarily read <laughs> the fine print. So then when I bought it, I was like, okay, this requires a lot more sewing than I originally had thought but it did turn out pretty cute. So I was pretty happy with it and I probably will make I think one more, I'm thinking kind of pink or something. Maybe another one like I did with my bunnies. We'll just see, but I wanted to have a butterfly because I have been asked about them before and 
This one was pretty cute and pretty easy, so I'm pretty happy with that. So everyone, that is basically everything that I made over this past week, excluding the things that I crocheted last night and today that still need to be sewn. So I was pretty happy with myself. Granted, this week is definitely not gonna go like that because I have appointments and everything, my horses and the weather is much nicer, so I am able to ride a lot more opposed to last week. But I'm still proud of myself for getting this stuff done and still having quite a few things on my desk that still need to be finished up for my March market. So I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.